He says, let, don't, don't you let your heart be troubled. In other words, if you allow your heart to trouble you, it will trouble you. It'll keep you up at night. A troubled heart will make you an insomniac. A troubled heart will cause you to be depressed. See, the Bible says anxiety in the heart of man causes it to stoop. That's depression. So wherever there is depression, there is fear in the heart. Medicine won't get fear out of your heart. You can medicate a person till they are loopy. It won't get fear out of the heart. It may temporarily change your mood. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations being used by the power of the Holy Spirit has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. There are some things that religion has taught us that have actually hindered us in walking, receiving, and possessing those things that God has in mind for us because we have bought an erroneous misconception that God will do all the heart regulating. That, that he will be your heart regulator. Your man. Now again, it is his power, absolutely. Uh, in the same way that I've said oftentimes, you know, there are lights on in this tabernacle. Now somebody went and turned the switch to cause these lights to come on. And, and so when they flip the switch, you can say they turn the lights on. But what is implied is that somebody came before them and wired this room so that a simple flip of a switch would light the whole building. You understand? So while, while if I came and turned on the, the, the switch and all the lights came on, you could say uh, Bishop turned on the lights. The implication is somebody came here before Bishop flipped the switch and wired this so that one flip of the switch would cause the whole place to light. So whoever actually did that supplied the power. Yeah. I just flipped the switch. So in, 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 the same, in the same way, yes, the power of God is what will regulate and manage my heart. But if I don't flip certain switches, then I cannot expect God to manage and regulate things when he has given me power and authority to do so. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. And so uh, one of the things we said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through some things we laid down so I'm not reading a bunch of scripture and uh, taking time that we've already taken. Uh, but but I, you know, I want everybody to come, but you can go and get those uh, scriptures. In Luke 21, 24 through 28, we, we see Jesus talking about what the dynamic will be at the end of the ages. And one of the things he says, if you look at verse 25, he says there will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. And on earth, distress of nations. In other words, nations will be in distress with perplexity. The problems will be so severe that there won't be answers in presidential houses, in prime minister's houses and that. <clears throat> there won't be answers in Congress to the dilemmas that are happening. Look at verse 26. And then it says men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth 
for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So one of the things we established here from the Word of God is that one of the end time strategies, one of the end time agendas of the adversary is to cause heart failure. Heart failure amongst humanity. Now I'm not talking about that, 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 that thing with the vessels. No, I'm, I'm not talking about the physical heart. I'm talking about the heart, the spiritual heart of man. And, and the way the Word of God articulates it here, it says men's hearts failing them. Everybody say, failing them. Failing say it again, failing them. Failing and I was meditating on that some time ago at the direction of the Lord. Again, I didn't find it. He was showing it to me. But he said, son, pay attention of, of the words. Men's hearts failing them. Meaning your heart was designed to serve you, not to fail you. See, if a thing can fail you, then it can also serve you. It can also help you. It can empower you. And he said, I created man's heart to serve him in times of fear and peril, not to fail. Are you there? I said, are you there? So one of the end time agendas of the enemy will be to cause heart failure throughout humanity. Men's hearts failing them, the Bible says, for fear and the expectation of things coming on the earth. In other words, you'll be hearing about what's coming and it will contribute to your heart failure. You'll be listening to the news of this and that and this is about to happen and that's about to happen and this is about to happen and it will contribute to the failing of your heart if you don't know how to manage it how to garner it and protect it. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. And, uh, and see, if your heart fails, there's stuff you won't be able to do, be, acquire, to represent in the earth for the kingdom of God. So we said that God has designed the heart of man to serve him in times of fear and in perilous times. Paul said that the Spirit speaks expressly that in the last days, perilous times will come. That word literally means exceedingly fierce. In other words, the times will be fierce. And if your heart is not steady, if it is not managed to deal with the times, you'll see people cracking and breaking and falling apart that you never expected to see falling apart. Come on, say amen. So, so God has designed the heart of man to serve him in fear. Now, I, I, there's a, a premise here that we also articulated that the Lord said to us, and he spoke to me very clearly, he said the pandemic is not over. Uh, e even though the disease is lightning, the disease was not the pandemic. Fear was the pandemic. Fear is the pandemic. The disease was the passenger on the jet called pandemic. Or, or on the jet called fear. Wait a minute if you understand what I'm saying. See, fear is the pandemic. And whatever the enemy can use to get fear in the hearts of man, he's going to use. So the pandemic is lifting. Now there's war. And see, this is what Jesus said. You're going to see this, this, earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars, this, that. And the scripture teaches that as the approach of the coming of Christ approaches, these things are going to get in greater rapidity, in greater succession. He said, like a woman giving birth, the closer you come to giving birth, the contractions get closer together. The closer the coming of the Lord, the contractions of the earth will be closer together. Amen. Are you still here? So uh, we looked at a couple things. Go to Proverbs 18, uh, 14 and 15, quick. Proverbs 18, 14 and 15. So we got into this and we started looking at the... Uh, the makeup of the heart spiritually. What does the Bible mean when it talks about the heart of man? The heart of man is not just the spirit of man. Uh, the heart and uh, the spirit and the heart of man are not the same thing. Look at Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness or in infirmity, in weakness. But who can bear a broken spirit? Everybody say Spirit. But look at the very next verse, verse 15. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. So you have the spirit of man. Man is created in the image and likeness of God. God is spirit. 
man is spirit, but then man also has a heart. And the heart, he says, has to acquire. It acquires knowledge. See, your spirit doesn't need to acquire anything. If you are born again, your spirit is indwelled by the Holy Spirit. So everything you need is in there. It's in the whole, are you there? It's in the Holy Spirit in your spirit. The Holy Spirit resides within the spirit of the born again, new creation man or woman. Where do you get that? Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward most parts of the belly. So the spirit of man is what the Holy Spirit lights and illuminates when he comes in and resides. The Bible says, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the spirit of God dwells in you. Well, you are not body. You are spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, we looked at, but Paul prays, he says, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless to the coming of the Lord. So man is spirit, man is soul, the soul consists of the mind, the will, the emotions, and man is physical body. Spirit, soul, mind, will, emotions, and body. So it takes all of that to make man. Are you still here? Now we look, are, are, are you with me? So the spirit of man is indwelled by the Holy Spirit and all the wisdom of God, all the fullness of God is in there. Nothing, the new creation born again man doesn't need to acquire anything in his spirit. The Holy Spirit is all there, all the wisdom of God is there. But it says the heart of, so for that man or woman who is born again to become prudent, to become wise, the heart has to acquire some things. Well, where is the heart acquiring? The heart is acquiring from the Spirit. Now, so what is the heart of man? We looked at Hebrews 4.12, put it up. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, even to the dividing asunder, or the separating, the dividing apart, of soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of man's heart. So we looked here and we said, there is a place where soul, which is mind, will, and emotions, and spirit connect. Because if the word can divide them, they have to be connected in the spirit. And years ago I said this, and you can disagree with me if you want, but I believe I have the mind of the spirit on this because I believe it is something God showed me years ago. That the, the heart of man is where the spirit and the soul of man connect. The objective is that what is in the spirit flow into the mind, flow into the will, and flow into the emotions. The more what is in the spirit flows into your mind, will, and emotions, that is your heart, where they connect, the more powerfully you walk in the things of the kingdom. See, the man or woman who is walking in greater victory doesn't have more Holy Ghost than you. They don't have more of the Holy Spirit than you because when the Holy Spirit comes in, all of him comes in. So I don't have more Holy Ghost than you have. And it is erroneous to pray for more of God. <laughs> you can't get any more full than all. Come on, say amen to this. Now, now again, you say, Bishop, you're making a distinction when there is the, where there's no difference. No, no, no. Because, see, if your understanding is wrong, your praying will be wrong. And if your praying will be wrong, your receiving will be wrong. So, I need more of God. No, you don't. You need less of you in the way of what's already in you. Well, you, you don't need more of God. You need less of your mind. See, you don't need more of God. You need to get your will under subjection to the Holy Ghost. You don't need more of God. You need to learn how to manage your emotions. The soul. And see, the heart of man, glory to God, is where that spirit 
and that soul connect. Do you get it? So the man or woman who is walking in a certain dimension, and God, man, God dealt with me about this. He, he, he checked me. He said, don't think because you're teaching this, you got it all together yourself. I said, sir, I'm sure I do not. And he said, because I'm checking you while you're preaching. I said, yes, sir. He said that to me this morning. So <laughs> I am an ambassador in change. You hear me? I, I, so, so, so stay with me. Watch me now. Watch, watch, watch. Come on, lay your hands on yourselves and say, we're all perfecting this in Jesus' name. So, 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 to, so to watch this. So, so, so God has designed the heart of man to serve. And see, here's what, the, oh, I got to get to this. See, the more, the more of what's in the Holy Ghost, the more of what's in your spirit, you new creation, you. The more of what's in your spirit gets into your mind, your will, and your emotions, the more power you walk in, the more of the anointing flows through you, the more stable you get. Stuff doesn't move you. It doesn't shake you when it's shaking other people and they're wondering. You are steady, baby. And it's not that you're more saved. It's that you, oh, please hear me. It is that you have taken on the responsibility of the management of your heart. And you're not leaving it to God or to other people or to situations or to things. Come on, say amen to this. Now watch, we're going somewhere with this. We're going somewhere with this. So the stewardship, the guardianship, the management of the heart will be a key to walking in victory and resisting deception and delusion in the last days. I'm going to say it again. The stewardship, the I, I feel the Holy Ghost. The stewardship, the guardianship, the management of the heart will be the key to walking in victory and resisting deception and delusion in the last days. See, remember, First Thessalonians says, and because they did not love the truth, God sent them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You will believe the lie if you don't manage your soul. Now, why is that? Watch it. Oh, this is so good. God, help me get through with this. So you are told all the way back in Proverbs, Proverbs 4.23, put it up. It, it, it says, guard your heart. New King James says, keep it. The King James says, guard it. Guard your heart. Who's he talking to? You. Well, a lot of God, no, he won't. You guard it. Guard your heart with all due Guard what gets into your mind. Guard what you allow in your will. Guard what you permit to affect your emotions. No, you're not listening to me. Guard what you allow. Watch it. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? 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 Because the forces of life now, what are we talking about? We're talking about Ioneos Zoe. We're talking about eternal life. life that can, the forces of it are flowing out of your heart. Notice, it's not just flowing out of your spirit. Flowing out of your heart. So the Holy Spirit is, is pouring it, dumping it into your spirit constantly. The Holy Spirit is unloading stuff into your spirit constantly. And your spirit is receiving it. But if your mind is not renewed, it's a dam stopping the flow. If your will is not managed, it's a dam stopping the flow. If your emotions are wishy-washy, it's a dam stopping the flow. So, again, what are those issues? See, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violence take it by force. The violent, the extreme, take the kingdom by those forces. What are they? Faith. Love. Are you still here? I could name about 12 of them. All of the manifestations of the Spirit are forces of life. So the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, gifts of healings, working of miracles, discerning of spirits, gifts of faith. These are all forces of life. 
are you there? These are forces of life. These are not things you have to go get. They're in you. I'm talking you. Oh, can't get into that. See, see, we have been taught erroneously concerning the manifestation of the Spirit. Well, you have this one and you have that one and she has tongues interpretation and he's got prophecy and she's got gifts of healing. No, 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 no. They are manifestations of the Spirit. The Bible calls them manifestations, not gifts. They are manifestations of the Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit is in you, then all of his manifestations came in with him. What is manifesting through you has to do with what you are permitting, what you are open to. See, this is why, this is why, this is why the devil wants you to believe and wants you to be erroneously taught by preachers who don't know their Bible that you have a couple of gifts and you have a couple. You know why? Because if you get in front of somebody who needs a word of knowledge and you need to be able to tell them what their mama's name is and what happened to them in order for them to believe, then you think you got to come get me. But if you know, huh, the Holy Ghost is on the inside of me and whatever needs to manifest to bring this person to Christ. Okay, that's not what I'm teaching. Not what I'm teaching. So, 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 so the stewardship, the guardianship, the management of the heart will be key. Now Jesus, Jesus foreshadowed this. I got, I got to show you this in context. Go to John 14. Go to John 14. Oh, man, this will, this will turn your lights on. This will turn your lights on right here. Go to John 14. Now, most Christians, although they may not know exactly the address of this verse, can quote it. Because Jesus said it to, he said, uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, he says to Peter, let not your heart, don't let it. Don't, don't, in other words, it will trouble you if you let it. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Meaning, your heart will trouble you if you let it. So Jesus just said, I have put you in control. You new creation. you." Now again, Peter's not born again yet, which we'll see in just a moment. But Jesus is laying down principles of the new creation. I'm going to show you something in just a moment. He says, let, don't, don't you let your heart be troubled. In other words, if you allow your heart to trouble you, it will trouble you. It'll keep you up at night. A troubled heart will make you an insomniac. A troubled heart will cause you to be depressed. See, the Bible says anxiety in the heart of man causes it to stoop. That's depression. So wherever there is depression, there is fear in the heart. Medicine won't get fear out of your heart. You can medicate a person till they are loopy. It won't get fear out of the heart. It may temporarily change your mood. Boy, it's... I'm sorry. I have to preach truth. It, it, it's amazing what the word of God will show you. Are you still here? So, so he says, let not your heart be troubled. Now let's read the rest of this. Uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. That literally means 
dwelling places or rooms. There are many places or spaces. I told you before, he's not talking there about some 20,000 square foot uh, palace you have over in glory land. Now you may have one. I'm not saying you don't. But I'm saying he's not talking about that here. Now how can you say that? Because I can read. Notice, he says, in my father's house are many men. Just watch this. If it were not so, I would have told you. And again, I go to prepare a place for you. And so people have thought, okay, that means that Jesus has gone to work on your construction project. But the scripture says that on the seventh day of creation, God rested from all his work. So if you have one, it was finished by day six. Jesus did not go to work on it. See, the, the place that he is telling you he has gone to prepare for you is not in heaven. It's here. Let me show it to you. I go to prepare a place. Let me tell you what he's actually saying. I am right now occupying the place you are going to be occupying when I leave. You're not in it yet because you're not yet made like me. After my resurrection, you will be like me. You will be indwelled by the Spirit of God and then you will step into the place I have prepared for you because I vacated it. In the earth. You say, Bishop McClendon, you are twisting scripture. No, you learned it wrong. I'm going to show it to you. It's right there. If you read it in context, it's right there. And I learned it wrong. You've been set apart by God through the finished work of Jesus Christ to impact the world in every arena he's called you to. You are destined to walk boldly in great grace every day. You want to see God show up for you in power. You want to see Him favor you. Be bold about your stand for Jesus Christ. Learn how to receive mega favor and move in its power and privilege when you get Bishop McClendon's five-part CD series entitled, The Ingredients of Great Grace. Available at our bookstore today. Jesus has had this thieving betrayer around him for three and a half years who he knows has betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver sitting at his last supper no you're missing knowing that he's going to leave and go bring the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees to come get him to begin his trial to be crucified. And Jesus is sitting there chilling, managing his heart. <laughs>